In today's world, a smartphone through its many apps can control a multitude of devices. And there are even devices that can control devices. Alexa, floor lamp off. Thus, it's no surprise to see products like this, the Globe Smart Ambient Light, that is controlled via Wi-Fi through your app or through one of your smart devices. And what does this product bring to the market? Well, obviously you can control it from an app and you can control it from your smart devices. It allows you to change color temperature. You can dim it. You can schedule it for when to come on and off. You can also set it to detect motion all day or just part of the day. Let's take a look. Opening the box, we immediately are told that we need to download the Globe Suite. So you get your smartphone, download that app from either your App Store or the Google Play Store. So obviously you will need a smartphone to use this device. Inside the box, we have the product itself. All plastic, non-polarized plug on the back, uses a maximum of one watt. And we have an instruction sheet and a warranty card, then a big empty box. They probably could have used less packing material considering the size of the product. There's just a lot of packaging that's wasted. Um, hopefully they'll get a bit more environmentally conscious. So let's check out this device. Uh, first thing you need to do, as I said, is get the app. You either need to use your current login if you have other smart globe devices, or you can register. Or something that I've never seen before is that you can just use it as a guest. In our situation, we have a den that has a three-way switch, one at this end, one at the far end. Um, at night, it's pretty dark here, so it'd be nice not to have to fiddle around trying to find the switch. So I'm thinking that if we put this here and set it for motion detection, it might be an advantageous product for us to use. The physical device has one switch on it, nothing else. And like I said, the non-polarized plug, I don't think there's an up or down to it, though the writing on this would indicate that this would be up. I'm gonna plug it in. It comes on. It's a soft bluish light at this point, and it'll start blinking, indicating that it can be paired with your app. So now you have to follow the app procedure for pairing this to the app so that eventually you can control it with whatever is your favorite app controller, Alexa, Google, or whatever. Now back at the app that you've previously logged into, we see a screen that says add device and it gives you a plus sign to point to. Actually, you can't do anything with that. You actually have to hit the okay button, which then enables the add device button that you see It'll then ask you for permissions for location services, to enable the Wi-Fi, and to enable Bluetooth. Once you grant all those permissions, you can continue on. And at this point, we see 50239, which is our device. It has been found. We hit next. Then we're asked to enter the Wi-Fi password. Be aware that this is looking for 2.5 gigahertz. So if your Wi-Fi is set to something else, you may need to reset it to 2.5 gigahertz for this to work. Once you've entered your password and it's confirmed, it'll start searching for the device again. And after several minutes, we thought we were done. And then we got this message that it had failed to add the device. We're given two choices, close, which doesn't make any sense, or device setup, which we went back to. There, it told us that we needed to reset the smart ambient light so that it could be paired once again. If the device fails to link up, then hold and press the button. 
and it should start blinking again to let you know So if the device fails to link up, you're supposed to press the button on the side, which puts it in a reset mode. Uh, it's supposed to blink for longer than that. Let's try that again. Hold down the button. There you go. So now you try pairing it one more time with the app. Our next attempt at relinking was successful. And we got an indication of that. Now, using the little pencil pen next to the model name, I was able to rename the device to something that was more intuitive. Once that was done, we got a power button that we can use to turn the light on and off. If you go to the plus on the upper right hand side, that will take you into the enable permissions panel once again. If you back out of that, and now if you select the name Nightlight, you get another panel that enables you to turn on the light and also gives you some other choices to make. By the way, there is no manual that explains any of this. You sort of have to just learn it on your own. If you go to the upper right hand side, that eye will take you to the enable detection and scheduling of detection. So if you want the unit to turn on when it detects motion in the room, you would enable that and then you could schedule it. Say, you know, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. It doesn't allow you to do per day, it's just all week long, which is a little bit of an annoyance. You can also select the color temperature and brightness level that you want the light to be at when it detects motion. Finally, you can determine the duration that the light will stay on after it has detected motion. Backing out to the previous panel, you'll notice that there's another eye. That eye on the left hand side enables or disables the motion detection. If you touch the what appears to be like a moon, that will turn on the light and give you access to color temperature and dimness, brightness levels. You can also experiment with different color modes and setting up routines, which can get more involved. Anyway, so that's briefly the basics of this unit. An hour after we started, we finally have the device working, though I'm not totally satisfied. It's in detection mode and as we walk up to it, you see it's still not detecting us until we're right in front of the unit. And that to me is a big fail. Maybe it's got a very narrow range of detection. Nothing here, nothing above. Crossing in front of it finally detects it. So that to me is useless. Here's an example of how motion detection should work. In this room, I open the door and that motion detector picks up and powers the light. Obviously, that's the kind of detection that you need on this device uh, because you want it to light up when you walk into a room and it doesn't seem to be capable of doing that. Now you can program it to come on for certain days of the week with an on schedule and an off schedule. It also has the ability to randomly come on. So if you're away on vacation, that's another mode that it has. It can fade out to help you fall asleep. It can fade up to help wake you up. I actually don't know how useful those functions would be in real life. But I can tell you as far as detecting motion, it has a very, very poor range, which makes it worthless. As for its ability to be used as a nightlight, like I said, you can schedule it to come on and off any days of the week. You can set its color temperature. You can set the dim level. It uses about a watt of power, which is very low. But if you're looking for 
a light that just comes on when it gets dark in your house and goes off when the sun comes up. For a couple of bucks, there are units that will actually do that. The big deal with this is motion detection and the fact that you can program it and control brightness and dimness, but I don't see the big value in this and therefore I can't really recommend this. I mean, if you're looking for a night light, you can certainly get them that just do that basic function without having to get an app and spend an hour trying to get the unit operating. And while I do like the fact that I can tell my third party device to turn this off, Alexa, turn off night light. Alexa, night light on. One could easily make the argument that, you know, for a device to take over an hour to set up so that you can control it via voice or program it via an app, is just a little bit too much hassle. I mean, yes, I like the ability to just voice command it, and that probably will be the most useful function of it because the motion detection is for nothing. And having to program it through an app means I have to carry my smartphone and go pushing buttons on that. So that's really more of a headache than it's worth. So the only good thing is the fact that you can control it via voice control. But, you know, it's a nightlight. And do we need that much for a nightlight? Or should I just plug in a cheap little nightlight that'll come on at night and go off in the morning. I hope this provides some useful information regarding this device. And if so, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, join the subscription team, and as always, thank you ever so much for watching. Alexa, good night.